Hello, everybody. We are back in your eardrums for another episode of the podcast. Woo -woo! Who's excited? I'm excited. Eric, you can speak now. I'm allowed? Yes. I'm excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> Why are you so excited? I don't know. I'm just really happy. Really happy? This is news to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Why are you really happy? Because sometimes I just remember that Liverpool won the league and everything's okay. E Everything is okay. Liverpool won the league. Top the league. Liverpool top the league. Liverpool what? Oh my God. Oh my God. Liverpool won the league. Like it's just sinking oh in. Oh my God. Really. Okay, ready? Jingle. What? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Evie and Eric take... What's the jingle? I forget the jingle. I don't know. No, it's that. You oh had it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Mom. Oh my God. Oh my it. God. Oh my God. Evie and Eric take over the podcast. Yes. All right. Well done. Thank you. Okay, let's talk Liverpool winning the league. Yeah! <laughs> okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being greatest moment of your life, I'm 1 being flag. absolute shittiest deal, how did you feel last week when Chelsea beat Man City? I thought it was going to be like a 6. Like, I was expecting to be disappointed, but it wasn't. Like, it was the whole... I think that you overplay it in your mind, like you build it up because it's never happened before, that you try to make this perfect thing. And especially because when you're used to winning a cup, there's like a game. It's one game. It's mm -hmm. the cup. But I don't think from all like the old guys I've been listening to, they, they don't really remember the game. They won the league. It's about the season and the people that you watch the season with. So I think it was just fitting to be able to just sit down with the people I've watched games with this season and just enjoy like reflecting on how amazing this team is. How many decades has it been since they won? Three. Three decades. 1990. And how many titles, how many Premier League titles have they won? So I'm going to change a question because they renamed the trophy in 1992. Okay, hold on. Let me just switch so, the mic over. Wow. Hello? It's, it's, it's. Oh, this is the. Are you going to do like a little clip there? I guess. This is the way, I think this is the way we're supposed to speak. This I know, way. but you did a mic check the other way. Now this whole thing is going to be louder. Okay, that's good. That's good? Yeah. To all the people who are just joining Wait. the podcast, we've turned the microphone around, so it might be louder. So preemptively <laughs> turn your headphones down one or two notches because you, can't you know how You can just this join goes. in the middle of a podcast. Anyways, okay, so. You could. So we have to change the question because okay. Liverpool hasn't technically won a Premier League title. Explain. Well, I know, but that's that's like saying McDonald's didn't exist before they had the Mick Cafe menu. Like it's just bollocks. What? That Premier, that is bollocks. I know, but that the, soccer didn't start happening. Football didn't start happening in 1992. So why do records start in 1992? That's it's just branding. It's because the Premier League spent so much money to make the Premier League that they literally only keep track of who has the most goals since 1992. That's that's I don't know, it's just sacrilege. <laughs> Anyways, they've won 19 of the league titles and six of the European Cups, and they are the most successful English team, period. Period. <laughs> okay. Um, would you have rather been in Liverpool as opposed to watching in the basement with your dad and your mom and me? No. I mean... Even if it wasn't a pandemic and people were in the ground, my plan was always to watch the game they won it here, ideally watch the trophy here, and then fly out and go to the parade. That was always my plan. Because to me, the whole point is, again, it's like a celebration of, like, I've watched hundreds of games in that basement. It would have felt wrong to not be there with the people that I'd watched those hundreds of games with. It's it's like a coronation. It's the end of the journey. Right. Okay, that's good then. And would you have rather... I don't know if you'll know this, because have they won a... They haven't won a title in your lifetime. They haven't won a league so title, So no. you wouldn't know... Yeah, a league title. So you wouldn't know if you would have liked it better if they had played and won on the game that they had played instead of depending on Chelsea to win the league? I I mean, 
in the end, I think that's just like having your cake and eating it too. Like mm. there's the the most successful teams in Liverpool's history, the ones that we say are the best, people genu- like generally forget who they won the league against because at that point it's just math. Mm-hmm. You're so far ahead, like you're winning it four or five, six games before the end of the year. You don't remember that last game against Queen's Park Rangers where you win 3-0 and it's all mathematically official. You just remember the games through those seasons that got you there. So unless I was at Leicester away, United at home, Villa away, those would have been the games that I wanted to be at. But mm. Okay, and a lot of people were saying that there's a lot of tributes to Klopp, who's the manager. Yeah. Why? Can you explain why so much of the title win was put on Klopp and not on the actual players themselves. I think he was sort of the thing. He was the holistic change. So typically you bring in a really good player and that helps one part of the game. You bring in new ownership and that brings maybe a new financial approach to things. Or you bring in a coach and he just changes the way they play on the field. But his philosophy, the first thing he did was work with the fans. So his big thing in the first season was he was always yelling at the fans behind him, Mm -hmm. coaching them through moments, always wanting more and more support. He brought the team to the end, uh, at the end of the game, to the cop end behind the goal and got them to celebrate a 2-2 draw with the fans. And he got ridiculed for it. But what he was doing was betting in this whole thing, like, we are doing this together. Right, but why is that important? Toronto Maple Leafs have such a huge fan base, yet they consistently lose games. That's the thing is it's not about having millions of fans. Mm-hmm. It's it's about what the fans can do in the stadium. And I do believe that it there is some kind of magic to what happens in that stadium when the fan like Barcelona has, I would argue, the best player in the world in Messi. Mm-hmm. And they lose four nothing to Liverpool last year. Liverpool mm-hmm. without Firmino, without Salah. They just basically lost the league the day before. Mm -hmm. But there's something magical about what happens if you get the fans behind you that it it gives you that extra gear. And and Klopp brought that. He brought he was focused on fine margins. He brought a dude to fix the throw ins. He brought a surfer in to help them practice breathing exercises. Like he was focused on winning in all the little ways. Yeah. It adds up. And do you think the game against City is gonna matter if they win or lose? I think Tomorrow's game against City is the start of next season. Mm. So Liverpool can now lay a marker down on them and City will want to do the same. City will want to beat Liverpool to say we're still within touching distance. Okay, I have two last questions right. before we end this Liverpool segment. Okay. The first question, the first of the last questions is um, explain what the Guard of Honor is and that's it's- what they're doing yeah. At the game at every the rest okay, so Liverpool has seven games left, correct? Yeah. And they've already won the league now, so they're just playing these games leisurely, but there's something that the other team has to do for Liverpool, and that's the guard of honor. What is a guard of honor? It sounds like they just put their hands up and the players run through. Like their that's hands. basically what it is. It's, it's What? It's no. It's basically like embarrassing everyone else i don't understand this tradition so the other team now before liverpool comes onto the field the other team has to split in two lines on either side of the tunnel liverpool comes out yeah they're gonna do it socially distancing and stand apart okay but they have to clap as the players come through onto the field it's like the most Weird. embarrassing and like, then they have to play against them yeah that's su- and they have to do that for the next seven games i can't think of anything more disrespectful than to come out <laughs> seven times and have seven opposition teams clap you onto the field do you think it's gonna get old no i i think like there's... old watching like do you think you're gonna be like oh another i think for for like no, because I think that the lower teams would respect it. I just think it's like needle. Like you're sticking it to City, Chelsea, and Arsenal, who all now have to clap you onto the field. Yeah. Uh, and and City, especially after just losing it and giving it to Liverpool, now they have to reap the shame of that. Yeah, and because it's been such a two-horse race for the last three se- well, two and a half, three seasons, it's, yeah. I, just, I do not understand the tradition. I'd hate it if Liverpool had to give someone a guard of honor, so. (laughs) Okay, we're almost at 10 minutes Liverpool chat. Yeah. We're going to end it here. What 
are your last words? Do you have anything that you want people to know? Any last words to take away before we end this segment? In the 70s and the 80s, when Liverpool was successful, they had a coach, and he's never talked about. His name was Ronnie Moran, and his thing was domination. So they would win the league. He'd bring the medals in a box into the dressing room and say, take one if you deserve it. And the next day, he'd be berating them on the touchlines. Here's how we're going to fix and become better. So what I would have to say is this is the beginning. They've broken the curse. 30 years is over. Domination starts. Oh, wow. Snap, 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 yeah. snap. <laughs> now I'll just wear my flag for the rest of the thing. Okay. So this is crazy because I feel like we could talk for the entire episode this episode about Liverpool about how it pertains to our relationship because when we first met I couldn't believe somebody was so enamored by a soccer team like you knew everything even in our Montreal video like you're reciting Liverpool facts like it has so much to do and also just I know I said we're gonna end this Liverpool chat but we don't have to well, it's our well, show well, it is our show but another thing is that what's crazy is that like I felt like I was watching you experience something even though I was experiencing it with you. It was like your moment. Okay. It was like super weird. And like I wanted to feel connected to you in that moment, but I didn't. Like I was just so happy for you because you were glowing, but you were very silent and you were like in your little online world. And I just like... How do, I don't know. I think it's it it's difficult weird. because because it's the end of such a long thing. That yeah. it's like all of the little things that happen, the stupid games. Like there was a game in 2010 where someone threw a beach ball on the field mm -hmm. and the ball bounced in off the beach ball. And like that's one of those stupid little things that is now off your back. So I think if it's like a cup final, a cup run, like last year, you got to experience the Champions League because mm -hmm. you got to watch all those little moments. Yeah. And that Champions League is just that time that you were there for. Because I've watched every game with you yeah. this season. I think that's I think that's the only difference is like you got to celebrate this season, whereas like I yeah I you've had been to celebrating sort of the since therapeutically your release the things that happened. I before. think that when Liverpool wins next year the next league I think that I like celebration that I think that celebration is going to be different for both of us though because I think this one was like a shock and like an out of your system type of thing and next year I get to be a part of that will be my third year being a part of yeah. Liverpool stuff and I feel like the celebration will be more like inclusive because you had already went it this year so next year will still be like amazing but it will be more of the celebration as opposed to like let's reflect on the past 30 years do you know what I mean yeah and I think that the interesting thing is because everything's happened behind closed doors and because they can't have the parade immediately right um, I think that the drive will be there for next year and it will feel almost similar because It'll be that whole, we need to make up for this thing. We need that moment in front of the fans. So I yeah. think you will get that moment. And there, there will be a parade with a million people on the street by the Mersey River. And, and we're going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our next segment. And that is, ever since Liverpool won the league, you've been in a creative rut. Yeah. Why? I've been What's in a going creative, on? Well, I've been in a creative rut a little bit longer than that. Yeah? Yeah. I think Why do most you think of June happening? I've been in a creative rut. Uh, but your June video was so good. <laughs> Guys, go to Eric's Instagram, Eric Anderton underscore. He, he does these monthly videos. Wait, have we talked about this on the podcast I, before? I, I don't know if it was on the podcast. I think it might have been on you on, now. On you now? Okay, so podcast. Eric does this thing where he takes a video every day. Just since, a few seconds. A few seconds of every day. Since January, he's been doing this. And at the end of every month, instead of at the end of the year, at the end of every month, he's been making little wrap-up videos. Like, And so far, you have... How many months has it been? Well, every month of the year. So six. So far, you yeah. have six videos. You just finished your sixth video. And uh, you're going to be posting that today on July 1st. By the yeah. way, happy Canada Day. Did we say that yet? No. Happy it doesn't feel Canada like it because you've been working. I know. I've been working for an American company in New York City, so they don't obviously don't have Canada Day off, so it doesn't feel like we've been celebrating Canada Day at all. Speaking of, 
Okay, forget about your creative rut. We don't care. What did you do last night? I set off fireworks. Yes, yeah. for Canada Day? No, it was because <laughs> Liverpool won the league. Wow, Today's we're back Canada to Day. Liverpool chat. This is my life. <laughs> yeah, we bought... So, Eric likes to do this thing. I like to do this thing. We both like to do this thing. What are you talking about? Where we surprise each other. Ah. Like, we don't say what we're doing or where we're going. I mean, I can't really take Eric anywhere, but... I still got to surprise him in New York City when I was able to be to move more freely. Anyways, point of the story is the other day, Eric just said, let's go. We're going somewhere. After I finished working, we hopped in the car and then we drove like 40 minutes. And I had no idea where we were going. And it's like, you know, where businesses operate that are sort of like construction businesses or like it's like industrial industrial yeah. offices eric was taking me to the back of an industrial area it was really weird and i was like he said we're not eating he said i might not have to get out of the car like i'm trying to think where the hell are we going little did i know we were going to get fireworks <laughs> and we got a canadian salute which is this firework. It was pretty nice, actually. I just wanted something that was going to make a bit of noise and be red and white. And it just happens that there's a holiday today. Yeah. Red and, and white. It's called the Canadian Salute, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, we figured out that you're not allowed to fire off fireworks if it's not Canada Day or Victoria Day. But we did it anyways. I needed the video. And what did you do with your phone? So I put my phone on the ground right next to the fireworks. I, I was hoping that it would just shoot up and not sideways. And I lucked out, but it was worth the risk because the last shots of the video are this great shot of right next to the fireworks looking up. I've never seen an angle like that. So yeah, that was sick. You get a little bit of like a flash on the screen. I was scared screen. for your phone though. Really? I really thought it was going to burn. Like I thought the firework was going to like somehow like melt the side well, it did shoot when it the fireworks shoots straight up in the air but a little bit of like a spark was shooting out in one direction luckily the opposite direction from where my phone was so i got the great shot and didn't get a scratch on my phone what song did you choose to put uh this video to uh the boys of summer by the ataris it was a cover version of the don henley song he was in the eagles and we were driving one day, and it was on the radio, and I thought it was awesome. So I shazammed mm -hmm. it and tucked that away. Speaking of, we don't listen to music anymore. Why not? I don't know, man. I think I used to listen to my most music. Most of my music was listened to going to and from work. Yeah. I don't commute. Or like if we were designing something yeah, at, if I was work, at work, we were I listening. just throw them on. I don't. I think maybe that's part of like having the creative rut is like it. It's like the chicken and the egg. I'm not listening mm -hmm. to music because I got a creative rut and I got a creative rut because I'm not listening to music. Interesting. Yeah, I've been watching a lot more Netflix than listening to music. I feel like I can, I can't, I have too much ants in my pants or too many ants in my pants <laughs> and I can't just sit and listen to music just to listen to music. Like I always have to be doing something like I can listen to music washing the dishes or listening to music commuting or something but just sitting and listening to music i can't do it can you do it i i i used to be able to and i think the reason i can't now is just i i have this weird thing where like i feel like i'm not doing enough because all i have is time to do stuff so like mm. when i have responsibility like regular work hours or when i was in school it I could at least say this is my half hour downtime. Yeah, because like so you much were excited to busy. listen to music. Yeah. Now because there's too much time on our hands, the the excitement of listening to music. That and I, I think there's like, nothing testing me. So like yeah. when I was in a band, we were writing. I needed to study music to keep fresh and inspired. You were in a band. Yeah. Tell the audience about your band. <laughs> Are you still in a band? No. Why well, because. The the drummer went off to Berkeley, and the guy on keyboard went off Berkeley? to Spain to get his master's Spain? in composition. How so. come the band never made it? The basically the other two had huge aspirations to actually become like certified, like gen these are genuine mm -hmm. musicians here. So I I liked playing music, but I wasn't about to make it my career and go and get 
like a degree and go live in a van and play guitar all my life so what was the band's name it was stupid so it was just kind of like how our little shared album is Irvy or whatever yeah all we did was took the first two letters of each of our names okay. so e-r-t-y-f-e however you want to pronounce e-r-t-y-f-e. that e-r-t-y-f-e f-e give it a go or tiffy see when we played for the Toronto FC show, they called us Ertif, so we just Ertif. went with that. Yeah. Like Motif, but Yeah, Ertif. sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had like a DJ introduce us, and he called us Ertif. So. Okay, what kind of music did you guys play? What kind of band were you? Uh, there was no sing. There was a singer briefly. He looked like Axl Rose out of Guns N' Roses. Mm-hmm. Um, but the three of us who stick, none of us could sing, so we did instrumental covers. So songs that don't have words or we'd swap the words and turn it into a guitar solo or something. So it was mostly like hard rock and prog rock. Mm -hmm. And you guys actually, I feel like you've told me you played at a soccer game before. Yeah, we won. We rewrote the Major League Soccer is the American League. So we rewrote their anthem. Yeah. And they picked ours as the best. So when the team walked out onto the field, it was our song playing and like the halftime music. They played our song. But before the game and after, they gave us a set out front. So while everyone's milling around mm-hmm. before going into the, into the and ground. And you didn't get a taste of wanting to do that for oh, yeah. like big I, time? I, I, I enjoy playing and it is it is more fun in front of an audience. Like I have, I have videos online and people say they're good. But I, I don't know. I think music needs to be in front of a live audience or else it doesn't really count. Like, mm-hmm. that's what makes music. Music is feeding off of people. Well, we listen to music on our on iTunes. I know, so but it's not... you listen to an ACDC song or you're there and you feel the cannons going off. Like, it doesn't compare at all. Okay, what instrument did you play? I was guitar. Guitar? Yeah. And how long ago was this? Uh, 20... 11 to 2012 maybe 2010 to 2012 it was yeah. like two to three years and you don't miss it i think it was it was fun to play and whenever we played four people it was fun it was it was a really good challenge to write an album because mm-hmm. like we wanted to write something that wasn't like predictable like verse chorus verse chorus boring stuff so we that i learned a lot by trying to meet the level of these two guys who were like master musicians so. yeah Speaking of music, Eric used to put together these playlists at the end of every month, sort of like his monthly videos, but he would compile the songs that he listened to most in that month, whether they were old, new, whatever, just the songs that if he were to listen to back, he'd be like, oh, that reminds me of October 2019. And this month has no song. Yeah. I, and he would share them with, yeah. like, we're we're op- on iTunes, you can have Apple Music, or on Apple yeah. Music, you could. Can you explain? Well, you can have a profile, like you, like it's like a social media kind of thing. So I can create playlists and yeah. choose to share them on my Apple Music profile. So I could have a playlist that's called like, I don't know, the stuff I listen to. Yeah. And then if you search me up on uh, on Apple Music, yeah, yeah, you'd be able to listen to it. it yeah, if you accept them, because I think we're both private. But yeah, for yeah. us, we both have our, each other accepted, and then you always share those. And this month, there is no pl- monthly playlist. Yeah, they started because it was like I would hear a song, and I would just send it to you by text. And it's yeah. just a weird way to share music. Whereas if you could, while you're working, you just tune in and you listen to the three songs that I've added to the Evie playlist. Yeah, it's a that's good another share. thing. You have your monthly playlist that you listen to or mm-hmm. we listen to collectively. Yeah. And then we each have our own playlist for each other. And I put it new music that I think you would like into the Eric playlist. And you put new music that you think I would like into the Evie playlist, which... Let's just take a moment to talk about what is in each other's respective playlists because the one that I made for you, that's full of like Tyga, Iggy Azalea, Sweetie, like all these hip hop artists. It started that way. And I think it's changed a lot. It has definitely changed to like pop punk vibes. And then it went to like old like... Uh, old like old Peggy tunes. Jones or whatever, <laughs> like old crooners I'm talking about because I just love that stuff. <clears throat> And then yours to me is more rock. Yeah, I kind that of that I've never heard of. I'm thinking, yeah, you have like a style that you really gravitate to in rock. That's like 
big sounds or really like uh good ones like to stomp your foot too like or stuff songs you can edit that i can to. edit to exactly yeah, yeah. exactly that's like my biggest thing is when i hear i also have a playlist called songs to edit to so but they're big on the the apple music playlist they the monthly ones were your idea because yeah. it's kind of like it, it's kind of cool to put it in like a time capsule so yeah. now i have a playlist that says april 2019 yeah and i can go back and think about what was going on then i think i think of a lot of things that way like i was just talking about how i like doing this podcast because no matter what we talk about now even if it's good for our listener or not we're going to be able to listen back to this voice time capsule in 30 yeah, years like a moment 10 in years time. whatever and listen to our voices i also think i like doing that for my writing as well even like instagram posts or youtube videos i love that mm -hmm. it's just like sort of a time capsule type of thing so anyways we have five minutes left on our podcast let's talk about the question of the day tweet us if you guys have an answer to this we want to hear your your answers to the question of the day and that is your worst airline experience what was your worst airline experience um Man, I think in general, lately, all of them, because for whatever reason, my ear has been messed up and mm -hmm. the left one does not pop. It takes like two days for it to come back to normal. So it just sounds like I'm, I'm partially hard of hearing. <laughs> but in terms of a specific one, honestly, it was when I flew to New York at the start of this year. Why was that so bad? What happened? There, I, I've never had turbulence like it was it was dropping and i don't normally get motion sickness but i was getting sick and like i've had turbulence you got like if you go transatlantic and you're on the big ass plane mm -hmm. you don't really feel it as bad yeah but this is just one of them jittery like cars with wheel like cars with wings okay it's just not i don't know it was one of those dead small ones like one seat aisle two seats and you felt every little bump and like it was dropping and people were screaming but there's this one woman she had to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and the stewardess was like no you can't go during turbulence because you, mm -hmm. you like you might die if you hit your head on the anyways this woman was desperate turbulence was going on for like 15 20 minutes she finally gets the okay from the other stewardess it's like when mom says no when you ask dad so the other, <laughs> the other stewardess lets her go yeah and she comes back and she went flying through the she went up and landed in the row of people it was insane but that, that, is that insane. was the only thing that made it better was watching that woman go superman in the aisle i can't say i've had a bad airline experience the only thing that comes to mind for me is and i think this is just circumstantial for my like because I had a pressing issue. So what had happened was I was trying to get from New York to Canada in time for my eye appointment and my ankle appointment. I had them both on the same day, one after the other, like one in the morning, one at night. I took a flight the day before and no, no, no. I took a flight at six in the morning was my flight. And I showed up to the airport at like four o'clock in the morning, 430, because that's when the airport's open in New York. And you can imagine I had little sleep, so I'm tired at this point. And I've been there since 4.30 in the morning. My flight's supposed to be at 6 a.m. I'm supposed to arrive at like 7.30. I'm supposed to get picked up, go straight to my eye appointment for like 9 a.m. And then after that, go to my ankle appointment for like 1 p.m. My flight kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed until it was 3 p.m. I missed all my appointments. I couldn't get back and I was crying and I was telling the people that like my leg is going to fall off. <laughs> like you need to get me on this airplane. One of the girls was like trying to get me on because it was my 6 a.m. flight that kept getting delayed. But then they had other flights. So if you had a an 11 a.m. flight, you still had your flight because the, the flights before 11 a.m. were delayed. So they were trying to put you on other flights. Same airline. Same airline. It was uh, Canada, ca Air Canada. Air Canada. Yeah. It was Air Canada. So you got. Li I was like, oh, let me take a six a.m. flight because that'll be better. But if I had like a nine a.m. flight, I would have got onto my flight. It was just a certain amount. Like the first couple of flights of the day, yeah. I guess something had happened or something went wrong. I always thought they pushed them back. I didn't realize. No, if 
It's like if you miss your slot, you have to wait until there's a slot. Exactly. Open. That's wild. Exactly. It is wild. So, anyways, I guess that's not to inc- inconvenience every single flight that day. It's just to inconvenience the f- the flights that were affected. You know what I mean? I, so instead, you have fifty people angry instead of two hundred people angry. Oh, I yeah. Because if you gotta compensate them, yeah, it's cheaper. Yes. I get it. Yeah, I get it too. But anyways, even the flight attendant, one of the people at the desk were like fighting with the other girl being like, if this girl comes back with no leg, like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, So that was my quote unquote worst airline experience. I can't think of any other airline experience. I thought, I think I did have another one where I was, I've gotten sick a couple of times, not actually thrown up, just felt really sick, sick. Oops. Um, and I think... I don't have bad airline experiences because one, I just don't care. Like usually if there's a delay or anything wrong that happens, if I don't have to be somewhere, I don't care. I like spending time in the airport. I like spending time on airplanes. I just like that experience. And also the second reason is because for the entire flight, I sleep. Every I flight. Cannot. I wish I could. I wish I couldn't. I wish I got more reading or work done. Before airlines had Wi Fi, I'd be so happy to turn off my phone and not have communication for that period of the flight. Yeah. But now that there are Wi Fi options and whatever, I just fall asleep. Like, I almost wish that. Wi-Fi in the air was never a thing. Even though I never buy it, if it's free, I get it. Like JetBlue's Wi-Fi is free. But I always liked having an excuse to be like, I can't talk to anyone, so I need to read or write or edit or whatever. I'm fine in general with airlines. I just don't like giving up like my freedoms. Like someone else controls everything. Mm. If you're driving, you control. Like I, I'm pretty if Sarah's listening, text in and tell me if I got this right. But I think when we were coming back from <laughs> Liverpool, we had to we got on the plane, got on the runway, mm-hmm. and then something was wrong and we had to go back get off the plane and wait for another couple hours. Oh, like, I that's feel like that's like, happened to me that's, too. That's the irritating part. Because it's like we're right there. Like we've done all the waiting, we've done all the waiting for the idiots to get on the plane mm-hmm. and anyways. I am Anyways. romanticizing an airport right now. I would kill I know. to When airports an airport. were a thing, this was our worst experience. On my way back from LaGuardia once, I had a burger rare and a pint of brown ale, and it was perfect, <laughs> and I want that now. You know what my thing at airports is? Buying um, Auntie Anne's pretzels. Every really? time I go to an airport, it's like I get to have an Auntie Anne's pretzel. Do you pretzel. get like a flavored one? No, it's just salt and butter. Eat. Uh, I think I've had... Caesars in the airport one time because I had to stay like a long time I had breakfast in the airport at this burrito place and I had a Bloody Mary with that so I I want to experience airport experiences with you have we had one yet we've not been on a plane oh my god no because we just did a bus to yeah we've done bus together well, we've never gone bus to travel. New York together no, from New York. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode. We are going to bless your ears next week. So make sure you subscribe. Give us a five-star rating. And Can I be the loud ya. one this week? Yeah. Liverpool. Liverpool.